uh, don't be, feel bad about those questions. A, a lot of them I couldn't answer. Uh, so it's, it's very nice to, just to be able to talk to you, that's all. And uh, uh, one of the things that uh, I'd like to start off is a quotation from Groucho Marx. Now, I don't know if everybody is uh, that old that the scene Groucho on the TV, you bet your life. But he's a wit, no longer with us, by the way. Marx used to say, I was born at a very early age. And before I had time to regret it, I was four and a half years old. <laughs> That's how I feel. I, <laughs> and it's, it's been some years for me, but I've always enjoyed my journey. Now I'll tell you, I looked up journey in the, uh, in the uh, you wrote with the web or whatever it is. And it turns out to be a French name, La Journée. And La Journée means traces back to the Latin diu nata. That's what you, and literally means by day. It's not a year. It's not six months. Every day is a journey. So you'll, you'll have journeys and you've had them here. And we'll all have journeys. But it's not over a year, really. It's not over 50 years. It's not over 60 years. It's every day. So in just, I don't uh, want to start to ramble at all. So I just want to read you a poem. And uh, it's about a journey. The journey is everything. Every day, it's everything. God, it could, sometimes people call God the God of surprises. Every day, there's a surprise. Every day there's somebody new. Every day there's somebody in need. And that's what makes a journey, that you would observe these things in the school. You're in the school here, that you would observe that. Things are happening around you that God sent. It's got to be that way. Even in terrible tragedy like, like Ovalde, it's somehow God watches over it. So you've got to be a little observance, you know, in, in, in your school and uh, who's around you and who needs your help and all those things that we talk about in Christianity. Help your neighbor as yourself. Anyways, I'd like to read you this poem. This is by Constantine P. Kavafi. Kavafi was of Greek parents, lived and was born and lived in Alexandria, Egypt. Alexandria, Egypt is a Mediterranean city. It's very beautiful. Site of one of the seven wonders of the world, the library. Anyways, he was a, uh, he wrote this poem. It's called Ithaca. Anybody know where Ithaca is? <laughs> question of the day, one question. Yeah. Get the t-shirts ready. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, anybody? Yeah. Go ahead. It is Greek. Anything else about it? Yeah? Huh? I don't know about that one. Yeah. I don't know about that one. Anyways, uh, I didn't know where it was myself, so I looked it up. It's an island in the Ionian Sea. And he wrote this poem about going to Ithaca, the journey. As you set out for Ithaca, hope that your road will be a long one, full of venture, full of discovery. Lestragonians, anybody know what a Lestragonian is? It's a giant who ate men, Lestragonians. Lestragonians, Cyclops, and angry Poseidon, don't be afraid of them. You'll never find things like that on your way as long as you keep your thoughts raised high, see the dangers of the world, you'll never meet them. Keep your thoughts raised high. As long as there is rare excitement, stirs your spirit in your body, Lystragonians, Cyclops, and wild Poseidon, you'll never encounter them unless you bring them along inside your soul. Unless your soul sets them up in front of you. Don't be afraid of life. Life is a beautiful thing. 
to just, you, you're never in your life gonna meet an Alistragonian, right? These giants. And neither in life do you meet fear and worry and concerns that should overcome you. Hope your road is long, right? Long road. May there, never, may there be many summer mornings when with what pleasure, what joy, you went to harbors you're seeing for the first time. A harbor you've seen for the first time. May you stop at Phoenician trading stations to buy fine things, mother of pearl, coral, amber, ebony, sensual perfume of every kind. Uh-oh. Okay, life goes on. As many sensual perfumes as you can, and may you visit many Egyptian cities to learn and go on learning from their scholars. Keep Ithaca, this island, it's out in the sea, always in your mind. Arriving there is what you're destined for, but don't hurry the journey, at, don't hurry the journey at all. Better it lasts for years, so you're old when your time comes to reach the island. Wealthy with all you've gained on the way. Not expecting Ithaca to give you anything. Ithaca gave you the marvelous journey. That's the secret, see, of life. Have a dream. Ithaca gives you the marvelous journey. What do you dream of? Without her, you would never have set out. She has nothing left to give you. And if you find her poor, her poor, Ithaca has not fooled you. Wise as you will have become, so full of experience, you'll have understood by then what these Ithacas mean. So life is a journey, but a daily journey. And you don't have to go, you don't have to go to exotic places to enjoy the the journey, some people do that. Some people have ended up that way. So I didn't want to change, uh, turn this thing into a uh, travel log. Uh, you know, I've had some journeys, but uh, when I was uh, thinking about what to say to you about life, I thought it always comes down to people. Many things, harbors and new things you'll see in life as you go through life, but people, Ah, you've meet, you'll meet many good and wise people. So I'll, I'll give you a, a couple of stories of uh, different, different things that happened to me. <laughs> and one of them was Baghdad. Now, I was 24 years old. I was on kind of a steamer going across the Atlantic and landed in Beirut. Went to the school, Baghdad. I could tell you, I used to tell, when I, when I got kicked out of Baghdad, I came back to Boston College High School, and I used to tell them, if we get our work done, I'll tell you a mission story on Friday. So they were always saying, do we get our work done? I said, yeah, not bad. And I used to tell them a little story. But as I looked at that uh, venture in Baghdad, I was 24 years old. We were young. We were scholastics, much like uh, Christian. We were scholastic in Regency. And of course, we get all the jobs that nobody wanted. And so we get the job of living in the boarding school. And the boarding school we had was, uh, I forget the numbers, but there were kids from the desert, the Bedouin. There were Kurds from the north. There were Yazidis from the north. Anybody knows what a Yazidi is, you get a t-shirt. And also Mandeans. Christians, Muslims, Armenians, people of all stripe. So we had to take care of them. And this is what I remember most about those years in Baghdad. It just comes down to this one kid. His name was Yahya. Anybody know what Yahya? It's the Semitic name for John. Yahya. So you say, hey, Yahya. I know, erase the board. Yahya, Mustafa was his name. And I used to have to go in and shut the lights off at night, you know, tell them to go to sleep. And so they were fooling around in there, so I went in. And there's Yahya, I was in the first little alcove there, and I says, uh, Yahya, turn that light off and go to sleep. <laughs> and Yahya had a little picture, I, I, I still got it myself. 
a little picture of our class. You, you can't see it, but it's, it's something I treasure. Uh, 1960, yeah, yeah, he's right there. And he had the picture propped up on his lamp. And I says, turn the light off. And yeah, yeah, looked at me and he took his finger and he pointed at the picture. And he says, you know, as if to say, ah, uh, take it easy. There's our class, there we are. Aren't we good people? And uh, I always remember that about Yahya. They have great devotion, by the way, to John the Baptist. Never Yahya, John. So that's one thing. I always remember that about Baghdad. This one kid kind of encapsulated this whole thing for me. That when we were young, we put kids in the dormitory and told them to go to sleep. And then we get up the next morning. We used to sleep on the roof, by the way. It got so hot, we'd sleep on the roof. And you see the sun, the moon come up at night and go through the uh, palm trees and you say, boy, this is beautiful. And uh, I used to say, this is a great place, you know, except for the kids. <laughs> this is a wonderful place, except for the kids. But it was a wonderful place. There were beautiful, beautiful kids. There's 70 years more now, and I don't know what happened to them, and I don't know if they're still living, and I don't know anything about their lives. But I'd give anything to meet them again, especially uh, this year. Yeah. Then I went to BCI, of course, Boston College High School, and that was kind of a downer. I mean, uh, Baghdad was something that, uh, you know, gets you thinking about life and uh, oh, different lands. So we went back to Boston College after we were expelled. And I was told by the provincial, he says, you've just, there's somebody sick at Baghdad College, we need you to teach math and only last one year. I says, okay, I can do that. So I was there 23 years. <laughs> and I kept teaching away and teaching away and teaching away. It was a wonderful school. And what I remember mostly about BCI, of course, is a student. His, not, his name was Mark. I don't want to uh, say his last name. His name was Mark. He couldn't do math if you put that, if, you, if, you, if his life depended upon it. Kid couldn't add. But the thing is, I used to have extra help after school. You know how you have extra help and the kids come in, you say, this is how you do the stuff, you know? And he couldn't do it. So he says, why are we doing this? He says, I, don't, I can't get math. I says, I don't know why we're doing it. We're just told to do it, so let's do it. So he finally graduated. I don't know what we did. We, put his, uh, we adjusted his mark a little bit, and we uh, graduated him. Well, he became an FBI agent in, uh, uh, in, in New York City. And I always got a card from him. No matter where I was, no matter what I was doing, he'd always send me a card. And the last card he sent me, I don't know when it was, he says, if it wasn't for you, I'd still be in high school. And I said, and he says, and he retired, he retired, and he retired. He says, I'm surprised I retired before you did. But he was a great, great person. He kind of uh, symbolizes to me Boston College High School. He's from the city, great parents, not rich, student, wonderful person. Then I went to nat Nativity in Boston. I stayed there for 11 years as principal, fighting the all alligators. They, they, were, they were wonderful, wonderful kids, but they were tough kids, and they were wonderful kids. That's the, that's the thing about life, you know, the journey. As you look back on life, time burnishes people and, and institutions and everything you went through, they become something wonderful. The memories of that school are just wonderful. The kids in that school were just wonderful kids, but at the time, you know, it was tough, and they needed a lot of discipline. But you look back on time, as it always happens in life, they were wonderful kids. So that was a, uh, oh, Agnes Cornier. I always remember Agnes Cornier. She had three sons in the school. I have their names here. Nihel, Nihel, Adrian, Julian. They were all. <laughs> They were the three, uh, they were like three musketeers, you know, and they were real, you know, problem kids. Agnes was a single, not a single mother, but a mother that was, uh, had a hard, hard life. And I always remembered her. 
what a wonderful person she was, what a wonderful uh, mother she was, how hard she tried with life, and how hard life was on her. So before I left that school, I put a picture up on the uh, library wall with her name under it. And every time I go back to that school, I look at that picture. Agnes Cornier. She was a wonderful person. Then I went to Jordan. I get, I get worn out in the Tim, the Tiffany wore me up. I went to Jordan for some uh, recreation. And I ended up in the Jesuit Center there. Now I'll just tell you one story about uh, Jordan. There's a restaurant there. It's called Kudus. It means Jerusalem. Foreigners don't go into it. You never see a tourist. It's for the Jordanians. So I used to go into it. <laughs> and I used to sit down. And once you sit down at a table in an Arab environment, you were a guest. So I went down, I sat at the table, and I had this one, these wonderful meals, uh, Jordanian meals. Rice, big chunk of lamb on it, and Jameed. I don't know anybody, uh, Jameed, I don't think anybody has heard of it. It's like yogurt, you pour it over, it's, you know, it makes you be able to digest it, Jameed. And you see wonderful things in that restaurant. No tourists, people from Yemen, Egypt, all eating these meals. It's called Mensef, beautiful meal, but don't forget the Jameed because you'll pay for it. So that's, that's my, my thinking of, uh, of uh, Amman. And finally, I think of the Society, society of Jesus. Uh, great people I've known. And one of them uh, I've put down here is Joe McDonald. Everybody call him Joe Mac. Joe McDonald, he was a wonderful, wonderful Jesuit. And he uh, was over in Baghdad, of course. There was, uh, a lot of people went to Baghdad in those days. Joe Mac knew everything, physics, chemistry, sense of humor, hard worker, Joe McDonald, Springfield, played baseball for the Orange Cafe, which is a bar, great, great family, poor, you know, hard working family, Joe Mack. And at the end of the day, he said, he sent a, a letter around to the Jesuits. And in the letter, he ended up with, we tried our best. It was just a beautiful uh, letter of how our life should be. We tried our best. And I don't know how the time's going here. See, it's 2.42, you've got to get your ice cream. So I think I'm going to end up with this thing from uh, uh, St. John. St. John. There is a story about the Apostle John, a story. One of the 12 apostles of Jesus, who when he was very old and unable to walk, would stand before the congregation to speak to God's people. This is John. John, by the way, is a disciple who was never martyred. He lived to be an old man. Couldn't talk, couldn't walk. Stood before the people. He only had enough strength to say one sentence, to give one word from the Lord. And the word he would tell them was, little children love one another. That's all he could say. He was too weak to say anything else. So in ending up this uh, little effort here, I just want to tell you that that's the message of life. And don't hurt people. Don't insult them. And if they insult you, take it. Because little children, I say to you, love one another. So I all hope you uh, have a fine day. Enjoy an ice cream. Go out, study for your finals, and do marvelous work on your exams if you can. One thing I notice about the school today, I noticed it today, everybody's very, very tired. And I notice you are tired, and the faculty's tired, and the staff is tired. And you have a, you have a right to be tired. It's been a long couple of years. But I, I re really wish God's deepest blessings upon you. You're wonderful, wonderful people. The thing about, see, I'll tell a story about McQuaid later on, someplace else, some other place, uh, how wonderful uh, they were, how many good characters they were. 
and even the troublesome people, you know, you need the troublesome people, Listugonians on the way, these giants. Uh, but time burnishes people. Time burnishes, that's a good word, by the way, I had to look, I had to look it up. Time burnishes jewelry. Time makes things sparkle. So all your difficulties in the end, when you look back in life, they sparkle. People were good. How many great, great people have we all met in our lives? So I hope you enjoy the ice cream.